Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy, and if you're watching this video, your pet has probably been diagnosed with diabetes. So I'm going to talk about diabetes in dogs and cats, and partly for your information, but hopefully you also have this handout, and that's how you got to this video, through the QRL code. So I'm specifically going to talk about insulins. I want you to understand that not all insulins are created equal. There are literally tens, 20 different types of insulin for both people and then there are a few just for animals. And you know what? We use both. So I'm going to briefly go over a few of them. This is Vetsilin. This is specifically for dogs and cats. Guess what? We don't use very much of it. We have a few patients on it that have transferred in. The reason we don't use it is because we've had better success with other insulins. This insulin uses a very special, special insulin syringe that we don't carry. So if you are on this insulin or know someone, understand that it takes a special different syringe called a U40 syringe. I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. I just want you to know about it. Not our favorite. So, and then we have a couple different insulins that maybe you're more familiar with because these are common ones people use. This is Novolin N. This is a long and acting insulin that is given twice a day. We use this very typically in dogs. It's probably our first choice in dogs. This is a human one. We usually prescribe it out to Walmart. In fact, we typically use the Rely On brand, which is the Walmart brand. Other brands are good. We've just found it's economical and easy to find. There is also a Novolin R. So R is regular and it is a fast acting insulin. So we do not use R outside of the hospital. This is not something you would give at home. But when we have an animal that comes in with a diabetic crisis, we will use R to bring down their blood sugar fast. You will never be prescribed this. So lastly, there is a combination of N and R that they use in people. We do not use this. So we've had situations where well-meaning people have been like, hey, you have a diabetic dog. I've got extra insulin and syringes. You want them? Say no. <laughs> Say no. Or before doing anything, double check with them. So another type of insulin that we use specifically in cats, and yes, we can use Novolin N in cats. It is pretty economical. The choice for cats is one called Lantus. That is a brand name. The actual name is Glargine, and it's expensive. In fact, when you buy it at the pharmacy, and we normally script this out to Hy-V, you have to get like five pens. But Hy-V and Marshall have been very generous. <clears throat> Pardon my scratchy throat. Um, they've been extremely generous, and they'll break these up for one, one pen per person. Now, inside this pen, if you look, there's the Glargine. And it's a liquid, and you can use it two ways. You can actually use the dial and use the pen, put on the needle and inject your cat like this. And some people like that. I'm not a fan um, because I really have control issues. <laughs> and I like to use a needle and syringe because I don't <laughs> trust the pen to actually give two units. This is a human grade pen. They assure us it is absolutely accurate, but I like the old fashioned way. So let's talk about insulin syringes before I get off on this. Insulin syringes come in boxes with bags and there's a lot of them. The reason in, in humans, when they use this, it's usually one time use. Well, for as long as I've been a veterinarian, we have used one needle and syringe over and over. Sometimes that means three days and the needle bends and you have to switch it out. Sometimes it means two, three weeks. So unfortunately, you still have to buy the box, but just know with dogs and cats, we do not use a new syringe every time. So they come in all sorts of different gauges, lengths, and capacity. And these are important because they are different. A lot of it is personal preference and whether or not your diabetic is a Labrador that weighs 80 pounds or a cat that weighs six pounds. So I'm gonna show you a couple of the differences. Let's just open one of these up and take a look. So this is a 50 unit insulin syringe. 
So that means that you'd be giving 50 units. Never in my life have I ever given an animal 50 units. I think the most I've ever given is a dog that was on 25 units. That was a big lab. So that's a nice big needle. I don't know if you can see that. We like the big needle. You know you're going through the skin. Um, you're going through fur. This would be super appropriate. But if you had a small dog or a cat, we would only be giving two units. And quite frankly, that's hard to read. So they make some insulin syringes that are less units. This is 30 units. So you can actually see two units, which is what most cats are starting off with, is two units. So we have some cats getting four. Um, you can read that dial a lot easier. So here is a very tiny needle. Humans like the tiny needles because we don't have fur and um, it's not going in as deep. But we don't like it for animals because we're not completely confident like in a big dog that you're getting all the way through the skin. So when you're ordering needles and syringes and when we're putting in a prescription, and yes, needles and syringes are prescription. You can't just buy them off the shelf. Um, we pay really attention and you have to remember that if you have a preference. Maybe your cat is really tiny and skinny and you like the short needle. Or you have a fat cat, you like the big one. So just keep that in mind. We will guide you, but ultimately it's your preference. So one thing about, and we're going to use this as an example, but honestly, if you were drawing it directly out of the Glargine pen, like this, you would be drawing up your medicine like this. Um, there's a little rubber stopper. You put the needle in there and then you overdraw more than what you need because you almost always draw up an air bubble. So I drew to five, but my cat only needs two. So I'm gonna back off to two. Pull it out, inject. Let me show you with this one. <clears throat> so this is the Novolin. This is a suspension. Now I just got done kind of moving it around, but if it sits in your fridge for a while, it's gonna settle out. Ah. So that's actually a different color because it's a different insulin. But if it settles out and all the powder is sitting at the bottle, you don't want to shake it. You actually just want to gently roll it. <laughs> all the insulin seem to be kept in the fridge. So when you take it out of the fridge, you gently roll it to bring it back into suspension. No crazy shaking. And then you, of course, have your rubber stopper. Put your needle in your rubber stopper. Drop more than what you need. Flick the bubbles out and then push it back in. So one phenomenon that happens that a lot of people aren't aware of is these little bottles develop a vacuum. If you take out a bunch of the liquid, like you've been using this for six months, um, you get negative pressure in there. So one way to negate that is every time you go to inject, if you're gonna take two out, you put in two tenths of air to displace that. Otherwise, you get this spurt out sometime and it wastes medicine. So that's probably beyond the scope of this video. <laughs> so I won't <laughs> go any more into it. Um, we think the best way to keep insulin in your fridge is to keep it in the original box, unless you're using the Glargine. And then when you recap your needles, be so careful. That's when people accidentally poke their fingers. Oh gosh, I'm trying to put the wrong, I'm putting the wrong cap on the wrong syringe. Just store it in your fridge like that. So we do recommend that everyone in the whole household know how to do this in case someone's out of town, but having a plan on who's doing what on what days is important. So just have a calendar, like a regular calendar, wall calendar, just like your dog. Every little square, put a slice through the middle, AM, PM, and whoever gives the insulin initials it. And even if you're the one doing it every day, you may still want to initial it. I don't know about you guys, but there are mornings that I am like washing my hair in the shower and I rinse the shampoo out and 30 seconds later, I can't remember if I shampooed my hair or not or if I did conditioner. So when you do something every day, it's easy to forget about it. Maybe that's only me, but mark it on a calendar, document everything, write it down. Alyssa, what am I forgetting about needles and syringes? Oh, I know. <laughs> Sharks. So 
we really shouldn't throw these in the garbage can, but when they get dull after using them a couple times, or if you accidentally bend that needle. So these needles are so fine. If it bends, you gotta throw it out. Don't straighten it. It's a weak spot, throw it out. We do sell little sharp containers. You don't need one this big. We sell smaller ones. They're a couple bucks. They can go in your garbage can when they are filled and they are sealed. They go right in the regular garbage. So that is important. You have a sharp spoon here. I think that's it for needles and syringes and the actual insulins. So we're going to cut there and we'll be back with a different topic later. Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy and I'm going to quick show you how to assemble and use the alpha track glucometer before we actually have a live animal here to demonstrate. So we just have ours labeled because we actually loan these out for people um, while theirs is on order. This is an animal specific, dog and cat specific glucometer. There are glucometers, the human ones that we do use and we have used in the past. One Touch Ultra is our favorite, but the Alpha Track uses the smallest drop of blood. So we've gone to almost strictly Alpha Tracks. I don't know what these cost. 100 bucks, 150 bucks? I, th I don't think they're that. I think they're like 50 bucks or they're something. They're like 50 bucks. Yeah. What gets expensive is these little strips. So these are the strips that go into the Alpha Track. You use one at a time. I like to pull my strip out. There is a code on the back. This is a calibration code, 36 is dog, 38 is cat. And when you first turn it on, you don't. there's no on button. You actually just put it with the, the chip side in, the blood collection side out, and a code will pop up, 38. So this is calibrated right now for a cat. You can switch it to dog by pressing the code. Oh man, I just got to 40. Holy buckets. I think you can go down. Oh yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> Only press the button once, folks. <laughs> so, we're going to stay at cat. You can just pull this out. It'll turn off on its own. But we have to get blood some way. So this is a poker. That's not the official name. I don't know it. This is not the one that comes with the Alpha Track. They're all the same. So, inside, this is empty. And the little blades, all are these little plastic. They are universal. You take the top off and there's a little sharp blade. You put it in there. And I'm gonna charge it so you can watch it go without the top. It's like a dart gun, but it doesn't fly. So we set one in there, you put the top back on and you touch it right there because I, there's no blade, it's, there's nothing there, it's safe. But you cock it like a, like a gun and I'm not gonna poke myself. <laughs> what am I gonna poke? Oh, I'm gonna poke this thing. And you put it flush up against your pet's skin and then there's a little release button. You can hear it. And you can't see the poke, but actually there is a little poke there, I can see it. So you can reuse this needle in here over and over on your own pet. If you're doing different animals, you need to switch it out. We don't want to contaminate the blood. One more thing. So there is a dial on how deep this goes. We always keep it on the deepest, which is number five. But um, I don't know why you'd use one or two, maybe a super thin skinned cat, <laughs> but we always have it on full blast. And as you're gonna see in a moment, when we bring out to Winnie to demonstrate, animals take it great. So, just real quick, poke, milk the blood out till you have a decent drop. Put your cartridge into the glucometer, hold it up to the blood, wait, and have your number. So, let's get a cat. We'll show you how to do it in real life. All right, I'm here with Winnie, who was six months ago an absolutely feral cat with a bad leg injury. She's now the semi-sweet, tame, three-legged Winnie, and she is gonna demonstrate how we did a blood glucose reading off of a kitty's ear. So the first thing you wanna do is you have your alpha track out. You actually wanna go ahead and have everything set up, especially if you're doing this without a helper. We can see that our machine is functioning. We've got our cat code. I've got my poker. <laughs> 
official name, primed and ready to go. So Winnie has got dark ears, so it's hard to see blood vessels, but sometimes we can see a blood vessel. I'm just gonna stroke her ear a little bit, warm it up, that helps bring the blood to the surface. I'm gonna hold my finger underneath it, and since I can't see a highly vascular area, I'm just gonna hold it directly up to her poke. So you can kind of see the three little circles on the outside and a little blood stop in the middle. I'm gonna give it a squeeze and a milk, and that's really a nice sized blood droplet. We do not need any more than that. Right on the little black edge, I'm gonna put it right up to the blood and it's gonna suck the blood up and we're gonna have a reading. Miss Winnie, your blood glucose is 90. So these normally don't bleed much more than this, um, but you can hold a little pressure there. She was amazing for that. Most ca cats tolerate this very well. We're sorry, girl. Okay, I'm still here with Winnie. Um, she is a little bit scared, but she's doing great. So I have actually drawn up some saline into, and there's actually a tiny air bubble. It's fine. Um, I've drawn up two units of saline to inject into Winnie as a demonstration. This is the preferred syringe with the long needle that we like for cats, but really it's a personal preference. So I'm just gonna set that down and show you the spots. Technically, you can give insulin anywhere on a cat's body. We like to give it in the scruff because this area is a little thicker skinned and they don't have a lot of feeling here. Of course, we've all seen a mama cat hold a kitten by the scruff. So when you're first learning how to do this, I do recommend using two people and spreading the fur so you can actually see the skin to inject. So I'm doing it right up here in her scruff between her shoulder blades and I'm going straight in and then I'm pushing the plunger. Now, once you get good at this and you get a feel for what that needle is going through the skin, you don't need to see the skin. So like if I'm vaccinating a cat, I almost always pull their scruff up and then there's a little bit of skin between my thumb and my finger and I don't part, I just go in. So that needle is in her skin right now. I've injected a lot of cats. So I'd like you to start by separating the skin so you can see it. Don't go straight down. Don't go straight parallel. Go at a 45 degree angle. I'll do it one more time. You can see I can kind of hold her skin up and inject. So what happens if you're not sure if you got it in? Like you give it and you're like, oh crap. Um, did I actually get it in her or did I just squirt it on her fur? When in doubt, skip. Your cat will not die right away from having a blood sugar too high. Probably went around a couple weeks with a high blood sugar prior to diagnosis. But if you give too much insulin, that's gonna bring their blood sugar low. And when blood sugars get below 30, they can start to have seizures, go into a coma, a diabetic coma and die. So not to scare you, but when in doubt, if you're unsure if your pet has eaten, if you're unsure if you actually injected the skin, skip it. Skip it and do it at the next scheduled time.